Hey guys, before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to do a little announcement. If we hit 50k subs on this channel before the end of 2020, I will be doing $500 worth of summons in a 24-hour live stream to celebrate. So let's try and reach that goal, share the videos, and subscribe, which I know most of you that watch my videos are not subscribed. And yeah, anyway, that's about it. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today I'll be bringing you guys the best builds for Kicheng, and I'll be doing it in the same style as my Diluc video, so I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. First thing I should note is that this is a zero constellation Kicheng guide, but nothing really changes in your game plan or build strategy or team comp depending on your constellation, except that at constellation 6 she gets a 6% electro damage bonus whenever she does a normal attack, a charge attack, an elemental skill, and ult, and those stack. So if you do all four of those things in one combo, she gets a massive 24% electro damage bonus. But to be honest, you'll be doing all those things anyway, so it, it really doesn't change anything at all. The unique thing about Kaching is that she can be built in two very different ways. One focused on electro damage and one focused on physical damage. This is because her E, upon you unlock this talent via ascension, changes all of her auto attacks into electro if you double cast it. But because she is an electro main DPS, it makes it very easy for her to proc and take advantage of superconduct which highly benefits your physical damage output aka the white numbers. Kiching also gets crit damage per level, which is an incredible stat to have, so we want to crit as often as possible. So let's start by breaking down Electro Kiching first, starting with her weapons. The best option for Electro Kiching is the Lion's Roar, which increases all damage against enemies affected by Electro. This includes physical damage, ability damage, elemental reactions, damage by other party members, everything. But I would only recommend using this if you have it at refinement 2 or higher. Otherwise, the best option for damage would be the flute, which gives you really high bursts of damage basically every two seconds. If you don't have either one of those two options, then your third option would be the Black Sword, which you can get from the Battle Pass. And if you don't have any of those, or if you're simply just free to play, you can use the Prototype Rancor, which actually outdamages the Black Sword at Refinement 5. And I know it's hella difficult to get blueprints to refine it to 5, but if you've gotten lucky, then by all means. The bonus physical damage on it helps it keep up DPS while you're electro conversion is down, and it has pretty high base attack, which is really nice. And if you're really, really poor, or just low level starting out, then just use the Harbinger of Dawn, which is a 3 star sword that gives you crit damage as a substat and crit rate when you're above 90% HP, but I would not recommend running this weapon without a healer on your team, since you do need to be above 90% HP pretty much for optimal DPS. Now let's move on to artifacts. For Electro Kaching, you're going to want two pieces of Thundering Fury for the Electro Damage set bonus, and two pieces of Gladiator for the Attack Increase set bonus. If you don't have two pieces of 5-star Gladiator, then by all means you can use Braveheart or Sojourner. The only reason I recommend Gladiator above all the other pieces is because since you can get 5-stars on it, it can go all the way up to 20, and 5-stars usually have 3-4 to four skills on them just right out the gate, which means you can get higher levels and higher amounts of upgrades on it. But again, that's just in an ideal world, okay? Just make do with what you have. One set that gives you plus 18% attack, and then the two pieces of Thundering Fury. As for the rolls, you'll want attack percentage on your timepiece, electro damage bonus on your goblet, and either crit rate or crit damage on your hat. The stats I made for the Luke are pretty much the same here, but crit is really, really important for Kaching. You want at least 40% to 45% crit rate to abuse that massive crit damage stat. In a perfect world, World, you would roll enough crit rate on your substats that you can use a crit damage main set on your hat, so that way you get that massive 62% crit damage. So just try and aim as close to that as possible. Now let's talk about team comp. For Electro Kaching, you're going to want to proc as much Electro Charge as possible, and this is for two reasons. One, it has the highest damage out of all the elemental reactions, but it's not burst. It does the highest damage overall over the course of its duration of its proc. It's higher than even overload, but it is a dot, so you have to keep that in mind. And the second reason is that because enemies are affected by electro charge, they are still considered to be affected by electro, which lets you keep up uptime on your lion's roar if you are running it, so it's just a lot better. So for electro charge team comp, we have Barbara as our main healer, and I have her equipped with a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. 
obviously. And for her artifacts, I have a four-piece Maiden Beloved set, and ideally you would want as much HP as possible, as well as some healing bonus. Next, we have Mona as our damage buffer, CC bot, and wet status effect applier. We all know that Mona is very good at getting you wet. Since she's a support in this setup, the weapons you'll want on her would either be the Favonius Codex, which is good since she scales off of energy to recharge, or the Prototype Malice, which you can craft at the smithy, but your poor man's choice is the Otherworldly Story, which is sadly all that I have, which is a three-star weapon, but it does give energy recharge and a little bit of HP regen, so it's not that bad. For her artifacts, you'll want a four-piece set of Noblesse Oblige with Hydro Damage bonus on the goblet, and everything else can be whatever. And finally, we have Venti as our CC bot. For his weapon, you'll want a Stringless from Max DPS, but you can also run a Favonius bow or a Sacrificial bow for energy recharge. For his artifacts, you're going to want a four-piece of Eridus and Venerer set with an Emo damage bonus on the goblet. Everything else can be whatever. Preferably attack, though. So our game plan with this setup is to pop Mona E to aggro enemies, which helps our survivability since they won't be hitting us, and they'll be getting wet. Then we'll use Venti's ult to group them all up once they're close enough to each other, and then we'll swap the Kaching to use her ult and her E to kill absolutely everything. Barbara is just there to give us heals, because I don't like running team comps without healers, but if that's fine with you, or if you're using the Black Sword for healing, then you can just run Fischl or Bidu instead of Barbara, and that way you have the Electro Elemental Resonance on your team to get your ult back way faster, which is pretty crucial to this build. However, Kaching only needs 40 energy for her ult, and Venti only needs 60, so you'll get them back pretty fast. If only we had an Electro Healer. Now I know that you might have seen a team comp with 3 5 stars and gone. So to give you some alternatives, you could just run Fischl instead of Mona and Sucrose instead of Venti and still achieve a pretty similar team comp. The second way you can play Electro Kaching is to run an Overload comp. This one is all about big single bursts of AoE damage. For this, you would run Chi Chi as a healer. For her weapon, the Filet Blade is pretty much the best support sword in the game. Allows you to swap them in, use their abilities, let out a big burst of damage with some autos, and then swap them out. For her artifacts, I recommend running two pieces of Gladiator and two pieces of Maiden Beloved for max healing. Then for your first support, you have Zhongling. She is going to be your main source of pyro damage and overload procs. So for her weapon, I would recommend the Dragon's Bane for the Elemental Mastery substat, and if you don't have one, it is on the current weapon banner. And for her artifacts, I recommend running a four-piece set of Crimson Witch of Flames. The reason why we're running this is because even when she's not on the field, if her fire is what procs overload on an enemy, it will take advantage of the 40% increase from the Crimson Witch four-piece set bonus. So you basically have increased pyro damage reactions every single time, and the most important one is overload. And for our final slot, you would want Bennett for his ulti. Same as my Daluk video, I recommend you run him with either the Skyward Blade or the Lion's Roar or the Filet Blade, and you run him with four piece and the Bless Oblige since he doesn't proc elemental reactions all that well. And uh, if you don't have Bennett, then you can just use Amber and just have her be in a Bless Oblige proc bot. Another good setup is to run Venti instead of Bennett for CC, and if you have the Black Sword or don't mind not having having a healer, then go for Kaching, Fischl, Sean, and Bennett. And then Bennett will serve as a healer in a way as well. And that's it. That's Electro Kaching. So now let's move on to physical damage Kaching, starting with her weapons. The best weapon for physical damage Kaching is the Aquila Favonia. This gives you a physical damage bonus, attack, and it gives you a small burst of damage and healing. However, if you're like me and don't have this, then the second best option would be the Prototype Rancor. If you don't have that, then you can use the Flute instead. It has really high burst damage to kind of make up for the on hit, and if you don't have that, then you can use the Black Sword. And your last option would be a Harbinger of Dawn. Now for artifacts, you have two different builds for two different scenarios. For world exploration, spiral abyss, etc., the best set that you can use is four pieces of bloodstained chivalry. This gives you 25% increase to physical damage with a two piece, and the four piece bonus increases your charge attack damage by a whopping 50% and makes them cost zero stamina. However, this is only after you kill an enemy, so it's not really good for bot scenarios or single target scenarios. You need mobs so you can proc this and then just go absolutely ham. For those other scenarios, you're better off with just two pieces and then two pieces of Gladiator. That way you have the 25% increase to physical damage as well as an 18% increase to your attack. However, spamming charge attacks just for general mobs can be a little awkward since most mobs will be sent flying whenever you hit them with it. Some are a little bit more sturdy, but for for the most part, 
they'll just be getting juggled endlessly. So if you find that playstyle annoying or awkward, like myself, then just run the two two-piece sets. The substats you want are basically the same as any main DPS, you'll want attack percentage on your timepiece, physical damage bonus on your goblet, and then crit damage on your hat. Now the team comp for this is going to be a little bit different since we do need to be proccing superconduct all of the time. So for our main healer we have Chi Chi once again, and it's the same thing, fillet blade, two-piece lady, or two-piece main beloved. For your first support you have Kea, and he is going to be your main way of proccing superconduct since he has such a low cooldown. The weapon I recommend for him is going to be the sacrificial sword, it gives you energy recharge which is great, and it gives you a chance to reset your E whenever you hit an enemy, and this will happen pretty often so you can affect a lot more people with just two uses of your E. For your artifacts you'll want four pieces of noblesse oblige so that you can give Kichang 20% increased attack whenever you ult, so this will buff her and then when you swap to her allow her to proc superconduct pretty much endlessly since the ice ring around you will just allow you to do that, and since you have two cryo units you'll have a 15% crit chance increase versus enemies affected by cryo, which is going to be pretty much everybody. And for your last slot, you have a couple of options. Uh, you can use Lisa and give her the Dragon Slayer's book to buff Kiching. You can also use Fischl for just more damage overall. And with both of those, you get the Elemental Resonance to get your ulti back faster whenever you proc Superconduct. But you can also use someone like Sucrose, but I wouldn't recommend Venti since you need to actually auto attack enemies to kill them with this build. And Venti's Tornado just doesn't allow you to hit them all the time. You can also use Mona for CC and for actual freezing, which is even more CC. And it lets you proc effects like Elemental Resonance crit chance since a frozen enemy still counts as being affected by cryo. The only issue with her is accidentally proccing electro charge instead, but that's not really that big of a deal to be honest. Now I know these parties have other 5 stars, so for a more free to play approach you could use Kaching, Barbara, Kea, and Lisa, and this way you have the Barbara e wedding people as you approach them so you can freeze the enemy with Kea, and then you have Lisa for the elemental resonance. And that's Kaching boys, hopefully this served as an all inclusive compendium, and I hope you found this video useful or entertaining, and if you did, please consider dropping a like, and also guys if you're looking for fitness advice or guidance, especially if you put on some pounds during quarantine, you know, no judging. Then send an email to my great buddy Swolepool. He's been a friend of the channel for a very long time and he is a personal trainer and pretty affordable. So send an email to quashfitness at gmail.com. That's Q-W-A-S-H fitness at gmail.com. And if you tell him that I sent you, he'll knock off $10 off your total order. So take advantage of that. This isn't sponsored or anything. I'm not getting paid. I'm just trying to help out a friend. So that's all for me, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.